doesn't want to stay home. Everybody wants to be at home. I know I'm going to want to be home. <laughs> uh, you know, and people who have to leave their home to go into uh, assisted living or nursing homes miss their homes. So, of course, uh, the first recommendation that we make would be for home care, in-home care. I've always utilized, uh, you know, home care agencies. That's, that's a very important uh, and companion agency's component of, uh, of helping, uh, helping uh, people who all of a sudden have trouble living independently uh, to provide support in the house. Most uh, people do prefer, as they age, to remain at home um, because simply that's where they're familiar with. Uh, people fear a change. Um, many people are private. They like their privacy and they don't know how they're going to interact in a social environment. I think if they're spending too much time uh, watching television, spending too much time alone, sometimes they may feel, uh, or the family may feel that they're isolated and not able to get out on their own. And I think uh, that would be an indication that they might need companion care. As long as the person wants to remain at home um, and they do need support, then obviously the only way to, to accomplish that is to either have a companion or an aide in the house. Well, the companion care is non-medical care. It's not hands-on care. It's more of a uh, uh, homemaker, housekeeping, supervision type of care. Meal preparation, running errands, um, offering social interaction. Shopping and cooking and meal preparation and cleaning. So companions can often um, offer cues and reminders to the person when to take their medications and when to, to do some other tasks. Uh, and also an important thing for a companion is that they're there for safety monitoring. Often a person, especially with cognitive uh, loss, um, is not safe to be alone. So a companion can offer just somebody in the house to make sure that everything is okay. Taking the client out on trips, taking them shopping, taking the client to the library, taking the client to the doctors. Um, often um, something which is very valuable for companion agencies is the driving aspect, especially here on Long Island. Many people need someone who is able to drive them uh, outside the house and generally licensed aid home care agencies don't allow their aides to do that, whereas a companion agency uh, often does allow their aides to do that. Uh, when you're hiring a home care agency, you want to make sure that it's, uh, it's a reputable uh, agency that's been around for a number of years. You want to make sure that the agency is one that is the employer of the worker who comes out, who does uh, proper payroll withholding, who uh, has a worker's compensation and disability for the workers and maintains an ongoing involvement with the case. I like to use companies that, I've, that I'm familiar with that I've used in the past. I think a personal recommendation is, is good. If they're insured and bonded, that's a good thing. I like to be able to work with the coordinator, like Susan, who um, can almost anticipate my needs, and I th that's very important to me. And obviously, you know, we want caring, attentive companions. You definitely want the agency to be receptive if, if, for instance, the family calls up and says this just isn't working, the personalities aren't working with the uh, companion whom we have, the agency should uh, be very receptive to try to find uh, a replacement uh, which would be better. Um, and that's an important quality you want in, in, in any agency which, you, which, which the, the consumer uses. How long they've been in business, if they can make uh um, you know, if they have people who would uh, recommend them, I would, I would speak to other people about the reputation of the company. When looking for a companion care company, I think the best thing would be, first of all, to ask for references uh, and to follow up and, and really make the calls. And uh, you can tell a lot from the reaction that you get when you speak to, uh, to references. 
You also want to see uh, how long that company has been uh, practicing. Um, often a long, you know, a long period of time is certainly evidence that they're, um, they're well received in the community and they're, su they're successful. Um, obviously you need to ask what your fees are and, and you want to compare uh, one with the other. And you get a general sense, uh, even speaking with the people on the phone, uh, how, you know, how they react to you, how they answer your questions, uh, and those type of things. I've worked with Home Companions for about 10 years or more, uh, a very long time, and I find that they are very responsive to my needs and to the needs of the families that I work with and that's very important to me. They are, um, they have a very good uh, coordinator in Susan and they can provide someone very quickly which is sometimes very important to me and the people that they provide are generally excellent. For any family who's contacting an agency to obtain uh, someone in the house either for themselves or for, for a family member uh, it's very important uh, to uh, be able to speak with the intake person to describe um, what they're looking for in an aid and what, um, you know, and sort of the more they can explain what the person's needs are and personality, the more the agency will be able to match the right type of companion with the person receiving care. And of course, when you do contact a companion agency, you want the intake person to be receptive to that and um, to try to tailor um, the uh, person that they're going to send into the house uh, to, for the best needs of the person receiving care. I think it's all personality. It's, um, it's very difficult, I think, for a companion just walking into a home. And what I tell the families that I work with is that you have to sit down with the companion and you have to tell the companion what you would like her to do. Um, the routines that the person has, you know, what, um, what they like to eat, where things are in the house. I, I think it's important because I think it's very difficult for someone just walking in cold and families sometimes expect that person to just know everything automatically. So I, you know, when I work with families, I tell them that that's, uh, that's very important. And you have to assess whether the two people are a match, whether they, the uh, companion can establish a rapport with the client who very often may have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And so uh, a companion that's sensitive to that issue is, is very important, I think.